Hi guys, welcome back to my channel again and another discussion about uh, network, multiple network cards, um, teaming, uh, network binding, load balancing, that's what we're sort of uh, topic is about today. Now, what's my thoughts? Quite recently, um, in the last couple of years, I've actually, well it's actually longer than that actually, I've always put more than one network card. If you buy Dell servers, they always have two, ne two network cards, dual ports, and so you can buy quad cards going to them as well. Now, I would re definitely recommend if you're running an application server, farm print, or where it's a, a powerful database, um, then I would recommend definitely having more than one NIC installed. Right? Best scenario is is a 10 gig Ethernet. A lot of the newer servers now ha are getting 10 gig Ethernet installed, which runs over an Ethernet cable, giving you 10 gigs. But the only expense on that is the, having the switch. They don't come in. They don't come in large range of ports. You're probably probably looking about 10 ports, uh, maybe, maybe 18 ports. I don't think they come in very large configurations. If they did, they are going to be very expensive. Even a 10 port, um, 10 gigabit Ethernet is really expensive. That would mean you'll have to definitely make sure the PCs you're connecting to the network has 10 gig um, network cards. Standard, they still come as uh, gigabit cards. So you'll have to buy additional cards. They can be quite expensive. Um, Make sure you've got really good cabling, and the cabling is not old or tatty, you've been around for years, maybe that, that will also help with the 10 gig Ethernet as well. Uh, decent switch, and making sure all the servers you currently have, or servers you're going to buy, that has a 10 gig um, card installed. And that way you've got super fast access, super fast file and, share and printer sharing on that side. The cheaper way of doing it is actually doing quad cards, uh, quad NICs. Um, if your server comes with two, even when you buy uh, a, a pre-built system like I have, uh, I got one that came with two car two NICs already installed uh, on the motherboard itself. Then I had in additional cards to give me up to uh, four connections. Um, so that's four four gigs uh, across the switch. And I use standard dealing switches, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, I've got a Dell server here that has a quad card in it, two on board, four in the back of the quad card, and that has six pairs coming off of it because that runs my Microsoft Exchange server. So having users connecting to that, it's super fast and really quick anyway. It's not gonna be as good as 10 gig ethernet, but it's the next best thing and it's more affordable and the other way you can actually do it, if your server has lots of different slots available, PCI sets slots available, you can just buy single NIC cards to install like I have on my Unraid server, which I'll show you now. So um, before it gets too dark in it, because I haven't got proper lighting yet, uh, to look around. So that's my unmade server here. So on the back I have three network cards installed. So I've got three cables coming off of it. That's the Dell server I was talking about. That has two NICs uh, on board and it also has a quad card. I don't know if you can see at the back of this. So there we go. There's the, there's a two on board here and that's the quad card. So I've got six uh, gigabit coming off the back of this and it goes into just a standard switch. You don't have to have any fancy switch. I've got these, these that came with me from my, from my last business. These are uh, Dell, um, sorry, D-Link's web smart switches, because they did quite a lot for me when I was, was actually using them. Um, but you can actually use uh, any switch. You don't have to specify um, on the switch what they are, because it'll just go straight into switches normal anyway. Um, you, the other thing is you've got to make sure Again, oh sorry, over this side I've got two more servers. I've got the Dell here. That just has two um, two cables coming off of it. Again, this one has three inside the server. Give me three gigs off of it. And that's ample bandwidth for me. But if I was going for a large company, I'll probably put a quad card in there, uh, giving it six, and then two on board, giving it six. That's what I would actually recommend them do. Again, this side goes into a switch, this side. And I've got both switches connected to each other as well. I only done that because this is just a temp solution in my man cave until I get all power sorted out anyway. Because um, I've got <laughs> power for one side, power for the other side. <laughs> and my network cable is not long enough to go from that side to this switch here. I was all in the same. This is a load balancer. So this load balancer is my internet connection. So at the moment I've only got one ISP on it, but I'm gonna be bringing on board a Sky um, broadband. And, and I'll be able to turn one of the LAN ports into a WAN port and I can then load balance and join both ISPs together, give me double bandwidth 
and load balancing at the same time. So if one ISP goes, I've still got connection up and running on my system here. So that's what I've got running in the man cave. So that's similar on site. So if you're running a server, um, you've got PCI, PCI slots in your server, I would then recommend definitely going for more NICs in there. Or if you can afford it, I will go for 10 gig ethernet that self as well. Because I think that still runs over standard um, caps, 5 cap 6 cable. Um, the other way to be more speed, uh, so you don't have to have multiple network cards everywhere. Again, it comes more expense. It's fiber, but you need a fiber card in every machine or PC that you want to have connected to the system. Then you have to have um, a special fiber port switch for more to go into. And again, the expense go up. But the cheaper option is using standard gigabit ports, um, using quad cards in your machines. You can use quad cards in PC, just to make sure the PC operating system supports it. Uh, some, like for instance, um, these Dell servers run Windows 2008. They come with drivers for the cards that actually sets the teaming software up that allows them to join it as one NIC um, and then giving you that nice big six uh, gig uh, of bandwidth to your switch. Make sure your switch throughput can support a lot more than six gig, otherwise you'll have a bottleneck on the switch. So on many switches when you purchase them by, you can look at the spec on it and it will tell you the overall um, bandwidth of the switch itself uh, on throughput. So that's the bit you need to be to see if it's like really large. Otherwise, teaming will be pointless. Otherwise, um, other things to look out for is um, if you can't team on on the operating system you're currently running, um, you can um, get some switches that will do the teaming at the switching level rather than the PC level itself. You can do low balancing, round robin effect, and all sorts. Uh, the Unraid software I use on my Unraid boxes, all the teaming software is built into that. So I can say I have one use two network cards, load balance with the other two cards, or join them all as one. If one goes down, it can keep using the, all the cards uh, on that side. And then you've got big throughput on writing and reading from the network as well. That's how I currently have it set up at the moment. Or you can do sort of different different scenarios of um, using the cards, so like load balancing, backup, and so forth. I can go in more details on another video when I have a bit more time and I get the command cable sorted out. But yeah, so if you've got a server and you've got um, two, two built in um, and it's running like Windows 2012 or 2016, you can team, team it with the software itself, which is great. Otherwise, you should be able to use the drivers that come with the quad cards you purchased that will set it up. But check the quad card you buy, the teaming software will actually run uh, on your operating system because sometimes there's a bit of an issue there. Um, I found with some Dell ones, I could um, send quad cards, but the, the I think the firmware of the chip caused a problem that I couldn't team them up. So the teaming software would run, but would not see both NICs uh, or won't know either join them. Just a, so you have to check all that as well. But teaming is a great solution. It's a great way of getting a lot of bandwidth out on the server. So if you've got um, hundred odd users at the office. Uh, you've got a single server sat there with um, dual ports on it, then get teaming acti uh, active on it. Get it set up, get it running, add in a quad card, get more bandwidth to it, then you'll get a lot then you get a lot of um, less issues on speed on the network. It'll come more increasingly faster and faster. So my, my thoughts on that going forward, teaming all the way, do it. Definitely worth binding your cards up and getting more bandwidth from the server, especially if you've got massive client base users on the network. Schools are good, schools don't do it. I don't think don't schools do it. Uh, I always hear my son's school saying, oh, how slow their network is. Dad, you need to go in and sort them out and stuff. I bet they're not even teaming any of their network cards up. Um, I was, that would have helped them massively out anyway. But yeah, I love, my, I love, I, I always team, team, my, team it all up myself anyway. All my servers have more than one connection to the switch. Um, good way of doing it. And, I, and the only thing I've got bottleneck in is my Mac. I only have one network connection on that, and that's one gigabit. So I'm hopefully I'm going to sort that out very soon. Have trying to get another. Um, I'm going to have to have some sort of adapter to go in the back. That's on Thunderbolt to give me more than one connection. But Mac stuff is really expensive. But I can still copy quite quickly anyway because the server's got quite good through throughput on itself. But um, yeah, that's my views on teaming. Definitely go and do it. So if you're at, if you're at an office and you're managing servers. Look on the back of the servers to see if they are actually using one network card and whether it's got two built in. Because many times I've been onto customer sites, 
and looked at the back of the servers, they've always got one connected and there's a port still free or the other IT guys has disabled it so they're only using one. I think, what a waste. I always plug a cable into it and I activate it while I'm there and then stick it in and away we go. I always do that when I see that, good practice. There's no point leaving an empty network card not doing nothing. <laughs> That's my thoughts anyway. Quick video on that, that's definitely worth doing it. So if you're not doing it, get doing it. Get teaming up now, all right? So I've got another one more video to do live today. Um, give me 10 more minutes and I'll be back online if you wanna chat. Any comments on teaming, binding cards, solutions, um, comment below and I'll reply to you. And uh, if it wants another video, I'll do another video, it's not a problem. I will get back to my regular videos very soon because in a minute I'm still sort of getting my man cave sort of sorted. Oh, there's a question someone did about man cave question. <clears throat> what access points are you using out in the man cave? Um, access points in a way, I've got four, um, that you can see up there, that purple cable up there, that comes in from the house. That's, um, I've got one cable coming in from the Virgin Media box. I've got a second cable with Sky on it. I've got a third cable going to the switch uh, on their network, so my kids are on a separate network to mine at the moment, so I'll get this all sorted out. And the third cable is just a backup cable, um, spare, where we want to use it for testing with. And I'm going to look at installing a uh, fire optic cable to do some speed testing on longer cables a bit later on anyway. I've got snucks and scenarios of testing cables out, things like that. Uh, and we're going to see, there's one bit I want to do, I want to put a PC at the other end of this cable, on the last one I've got spare plug it directly in, make it a crossover cable, so they go from that PC to another PC here, and we're gonna do some speed tests down it to see how fast you can run data from PC to PC, um, whether it's any quicker than running from PC to switch to PC, whether it makes any difference. We can do that a lot a bit later today. Need to use otherwise access points. I'm using TP-Link access points here at the back here, and uh, that gives me all my Wi-Fi access uh, for my iPhone and for my Apple devices but everything else in here, like my Mac, my servers, are all wired in for speed itself. Um, in fact, network gear for the matter. I've, I've used network gear, I've used lots of many manufacturers. I like the D-Link products, which I've got here. I've got two D-Link switches. If I can, I have two D-Link switches, one on that side, one on that side. The good, th good thing about the teaming as well, you can take your two switches, put them on top of each other, you can bind up multiple network cards, run the cables to each switch, so you can actually not only just load balance in your cables, you can also have redundancy on the switches as well. So if a switch fails, you still got access to the network. So that's another good point of actually having teaming cables. So if you go beyond having more than quad in there, and you get two quad cards in there, you can have one quad card going to one switch, another quad card going to a second switch, um, and then you can put a link between the two switches, so they're both on the same network. And if one switch fails, you still got access to the network. And the only other difference is you're going to need to get two car network cards and two PCs having points into each switch as well, because there's no point having two switches and one fails and all your clients drop off the network. Pointless. <laughs> so, did that sort of scenario in the past, about probably about 10 years ago, we installed multiple stacks of switches and they're all low balancing each other for clients and server base. That was amazing, but that it they spent a fortune doing it and we did all the install for it. It's quite good fun actually. Any more questions before I shoot? What experts are you using in man cage do you need use? I like um, the access points I've chosen TP Link because they're cheap and cheerful because I had a video before when someone said to me, you know, what sort of access point don't have a lot of money. So I've gone for these boxes up here. And I'm actually doing an installation on these at, at a home soon. Um, so I'll be videoing that. So keep an eye on that one. And we're also putting an access point on someone else's garden outside so they can have full Wi-Fi coverage. The box I'm using, again, is a TP outdoor box. It's, um, it's a rectangular shape to that one. And it does five kilometers. How much were they? This box up here, they're about, uh, I think it's about 40 pounds each. They're only 300 megabits, but that was perfect for um, phones, <coughs> excuse me, tablets, streaming and stuff. And they do gigabit versions of these, a little bit more expensive, probably about 60, 70 quid. Um, you can get off of them as well now. Uh, but I just got those ones in to put that there, do the job. 
kids play on their iPhones, tablets, perfect for them at the end of the day. For business like, if you want to, you, you can go up to the gigabit version, um, which I think is quite high, much more higher bandwidth than this one. But there's no point having a 300 megabit wireless access point when you don't have a 300 megabit internet connection. <laughs> so it's pointless. And these are great because these come with central management software, <coughs> mouse going dry, which allows you to see all of them on your network and you can do remote firmware upgrades, remote reboots. You can even program these to say every night at a specific time, reboot yourself, keeps it nice and fresh and stops it from failing, um, which I think is a nice thing. But we'll cover uh, these installs very soon. I've got to do an unboxing video of one of these and show all the software as well to go with it. Yeah, on these boxes here, you can have multiple SSIDs, multiple clients, and you can block certain users using their MAC address, because the MAC address is unique to every device. <clears throat> Anybody's phone, um, especially with the iPhones, people will tend to name it as their own name, they will put it on the access point itself. <clears throat> the other thing the access point also covers is how much bandwidth each um, particular wireless device is using, so you can work out who's the most bandwidth hungry to the less bandwidth hungry people as well. You can put time, time delays on them, saying they can connect at a certain specific time, after that disconnect them. You can even load balance these boxes with other boxes, making your wireless network installation much more robust. But there's lots of configuration software you can do on that bo on these boxes. They're really, really configurable. But again, we'll do it on another video rather than this one here. I we're not going on too long. Anyway, let me get on to the next video and uh, catch you very shortly. Um, or if you're playing this on playback, check my other video out. So um, speak to you soon. No worries, Jake. Thank you. If I don't see your message, I will respond to this after the video a little bit later tonight. If not, be first thing in the morning, I will be answering messages back. Cheers.